today we're looking at number five in the top 10 of major nonconformities found in third party audits that have been performed over the last 12 months. And that requirement is 8.5.1 control of production and service provision, which is a base ISO 9001 requirement. Now, can you give us a little bit of an insight to this requirement? So I guess the first thing to say is this is an ISO 9001 requirement. And I think this is the second ISO 9001 requirement that we see in the, in the top five global major non conformities and 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 in a way that's sort of good that um iso 9001 requirements are coming out obviously it's part of an itf audit is to audit the iso 9001 requirements and it's it's encouraging i guess to see the evidence that those requirements are being audited um and we're seeing the effect of that in this being one of the top five uh, major non-conformities you know it, it's it's a a more general requirement because it's an iso 9001 requirement than the control plan itself this is a broader requirement around how production is um, managed and that covers things like the environment and the infrastructure and the equipment uh, so a, a broader um, requirement and Devon, we've seen about 450 non major nonconformities raised against this requirement over the last 12 months. What do you think might be some of the reasons that we're seeing this high number of major nonconformities? Uh, one of the main reasons is the lack of control of manufacturing process changes. As you know, <clears throat> manufacturing processes are constantly evolving. It's a living, breathing product, um, constantly changing, and just making sure that they have control of those changes so important and that's the reason you see 8.5.1 written up so many times and then secondly i would say identifying the gaps in competence of allocated production and service resources we see that all the time as well now have you anything to add about why you think this is cut so high in in the top 10 it's really that lack of control, isn't it, on production. So as Devin said, whether that's around the people involved in it in terms of knowledge, competence, um, or around the environment or the equipment or the reaction to certain conditions. So it's such a sort of broad requirement it's difficult to pin it down to one particular thing other than to say it's ineffective production control what do we think might swing an auditor then to writing the major nonconformity against this requirement maybe rather than some of the very detailed technical requirements that itf 16949 adds what what do you think might be the the reason i suspect it's to do with where maybe a number of issues have arisen during an audit and and they could all kind of fit under this as we've said it's already quite a broad requirement and it's possible that they could fit in into this because we're talking about the equipment the infrastructure the people it's possible that actually that culminates in in a major non-conformity against this general ISO requirement. Okay, thank you. So let's just summarize then. So as Niall said, this is the second ISO 9001 requirement that comes in the top five of major non-conformities being found in ITF 16949 audits globally. There were nearly 450 major non-conformities found against this requirement. Devon made the point that uh, production uh, is live, it's changing. Maybe what's happening is the organization is not reflecting those changes within their management system. So what is actually going on in production is different from the documented system that is meant to be there to control production. Now, I'll also mention that if auditors find issues around the infrastructure, they found issues around the documentation, they find issues around the resources that are being used in production, rather than maybe raise several minor nonconformities, they've got the objective evidence that this is a systemic breakdown in the overall control of the production process.